Well, hello there. Today I'm going to be talking about the number one most common myth that we see when it comes to eating disorders. So you guessed it, it is Eating Disorder Awareness Week. That is why I am wearing purple. And I wanted to dive into this topic because every day in our practice, we either get a phone call from a concerned parent or spouse or work with our clients with a variety of either yo-yo dieting backgrounds, um, anorexia, bulimia, binge eating based disorders, and we're constantly having discussions around this particular myth. So are you curious what this myth is? The top myth that we see um, related to eating disorders is that you have to be skinny to have an eating disorder. So let me know in the comments um, if you're wondering about that. Can eating disorders come in all different shapes and sizes? Or if you've struggled through an eating disorder recovery, um, have you been concerned about that? Or have you had somebody in your world maybe not believe you or take you seriously um, when it came to your recovery? I'd love to know if you feel comfortable sharing that. Um, this is a topic that a lot of our clients definitely find uh, difficult to work with. So the national theme this year for Eating Disorder Awareness Month, um, I loved because it really rings true um, so much to uh, the work that we do here. The theme is one size doesn't fit all. And this is definitely the case. What we know about eating disorders is that they can come in all different shapes and sizes, all different types of body weights, certainly all different types of ages. We've seen clients uh, ranging from as young as um, in their early sort of pre-teens, um, all the way up to, of course, uh, into women in their 60s we've seen in our practice. Uh, we also know that eating disorders for sure can also influence males. And, and certainly I think there's additional challenges and shame in some of our male clients in eventually reaching out for help. Um, but we do see eating disorders uh, ranging from bulimia, anorexia, and binging issues um, in our male clients as well. So how do you know somebody has an eating disorder? For those of you who aren't versed in this um, topic area, I'm glad you've joined me for this video. Um, you'll notice in the comments, I've put a link to some additional myths. If you wanna sort of test out some of the most common myths, those with eating disorders uh, probably want you to know. Um, you can go and check that out there. But how do you know somebody has an eating disorder? You really can't tell by looking at someone physically. Um, of course, you know, we've all seen some sort of a photo of someone that is indeed very emaciated, very, very low body weight. Um, and certainly that is one way that someone with an eating disorder may look. But I also want you to be aware of the fact that the vast majority of clients we see in our practice um, really don't fit that build. In fact, they have struggled with additional shame, additional overwhelmment, because um, they've actually carried a lot of extra weight, maybe by sort of society standards would be considered overweight. Um, and there's a huge amount of shame in reaching out for help if you're binging and purging um, or if you're starving yourself over exercising, yet perhaps still at a high BMI or body mass index um, that puts somebody in the obesity range by sort of um, BMI standards. So if that's you, if you're watching this video, um, know that we really understand that in our practice, that eating disorders come in all different shapes and sizes. In fact, we've had clients here that probably consume less than a two-year-old consumes for overall calories, like taking in less than a thousand calories per day, exercising like mad, and still not looking emaciated or even losing weight. And so some of you might wonder, well, how does that actually happen? Um, and really the way that I like to explain it is at some point you can't eat less and you can't exercise more and have your body lose weight. At some point, this just doesn't happen. It's kind of like your shoe size. Our body size is very similar to your shoe size. Um, you know, while we can shift our weight a bit, a lot of our weight is actually really not changeable by so many of the factors that we just don't have a heck of a lot of control over. So I think one of the biggest, biggest myths in the um, fitness field or sort of weight management field is that 
if you too tried harder and you exercised more and ate less, you too could weigh anything you want or lose weight. And that is a huge myth. What we know about achieving what we call here your personal best weight um, is, you know, eating healthfully, but still not in a crazy perfectionistic way that doesn't allow room for fun, soulful foods that we choose for taste and enjoyment. Um, when you're eating in that healthful way, when you're exercising moderately, but again, not in, a, in an extreme punishing sort of way, um, your body is going to move to a personal best weight that's right for you. And that number is not something we can look at on a chart. Um, in fact, for some of the eating disorder clients we've seen in our practice, what we've seen, unfortunately, um, by very well-intended health professionals is sometimes they'll say, oh, well, you're in a normal, healthy BMI range. Um, it must mean that you're fine, but they haven't done any digging to see what their activity patterns have been like or what their eating patterns have been like. And if I can give you an example of one of my female clients, five foot six, um, 150 pounds, she was one of the most malnourished, over-exercised clients I've ever seen and her body just didn't lose further weight. And so by her health professional not really taking her seriously, this only furthered shame and furthered feelings of failure that she was not being good um, at having an eating disorder and really harmed her recovery. So for those of you working um, with the public in nutrition education, in the fitness field, just know that eating disorders indeed, um, as this year's national theme says, one size does not fit all. They come in all different shapes and sizes. So the best way that you can offer support if someone does disclose they're really struggling with their relationship with food or you observe that um, they're really struggling in their own body image is just to express concern more about um, their energy, their vitality, um, their presence that's maybe just not showing up in the same sort of vital, happy, joyful way that you may know them to be. Um, that's where you want to place concern. Making comments about body size and weight is typically very detrimental and not where you want to go if you're first going to sort of reach out and support somebody through their eating disorder recovery. So curious in your comments or your thoughts there, if there's anything that I talked about here that resonated with you, give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if this topic is uh, interesting to you, what you wanna know more about when it comes to uh, eating disorder recovery, since we do a heck of a lot of that in our practice here uh, at HealthStand in uh, collaboration with so many of the fantastic psychologists um, that we've learned so much about from the emotional side of what recovery really looks like. So, um, the other thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about is um, what does a dietitian actually do when it comes to eating disorder recovery? Because sometimes um, when I field uh, phone calls on this subject area, uh, people think maybe I'll spend, you know, or we'll spend an hour with uh, somebody, we'll teach them what to eat, and they'll be sent on their way, and uh, life will be better when it comes to feeling better about food. And for those of you um, either struggling through recovery or um, certainly supporting a loved one through this, you know that it's not that simple. Um, oftentimes the, the work that we're doing with clients is really meeting people where they're at and having to thread a lot of patience and a lot of, I would say, science education to really battle a lot of the fears and rules that have developed over time. And so oftentimes clients are really kind of fearful about reaching out to a dietitian and talking about their eating disorder because of course food is the enemy and they think we're all trying to make people fat, which is of course not our job. Um, unless you're in a hospital, it can be a little bit trickier for sure. But uh, in a private practice setting, the role of a dietitian in your care team is to really help you understand what to eat, how much to eat, um, when to eat and really help meet you where you're at in terms of the foods you feel most comfortable starting with right now. And then in time, as we explore science and we dive way more into um, just really helping to build rapport with you and build that trusted relationship, 
Um, oftentimes when we've had more of those ongoing meetings and we're building things slow enough, then in time we can start dealing with um, volume issues in terms of getting quantities up to speed with where we want them to be. And in time we slowly work together um, to work towards addressing food fears, um, food anxieties, and a lot of the, I would say, more triggering environments such as social settings, um, that just make eating much more difficult for many of our clients uh, working through uh, anorexia, bulimia, and binge eating disorder. So I do want to let you know you're not alone if you're struggling through recovery or if you're a parent supporting someone and feeling like you're um, absolutely stuck. Um, having a fantastic uh, caring psychologist as part of your team and a really a good dietitian that really has worked uh, a lot with eating disorders is absolutely essential from a care perspective. Uh, whether you're going into residential treatment or out, I think having that care team of a psychologist, your family physician, of course, and uh, a supportive dietitian um, that understands eating disorders is really, really critical um, to take those next steps. So love to know your thoughts on the video. If you feel that this video might be helpful to share for Eating Disorder Awareness Month, I'd love you to share it on your feed, write us a comment, and uh, certainly take a look at that link that I've shared in the comments there about four other myths um, outside of the one that I've shared with you here today. So thanks for joining me. I will see you next week, same time, Wednesdays, 1230 Mountain Time on Facebook Live. Next week, I'm gonna be talking about heart health. So we'll see you there.